unsuccessful. Proceed to dust-off zone for extraction. Sensors indicate friendly dropship has entered atmosphere. ETA dropship, one minute. Shutdown sequence initiated. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, we are live. I've got quite a lot of new equipment set up and a lot of new features. And we are playing on the same old, very, very happy, big stompy robot action. So tonight we have some of the old and some of the new. We've got Cameron's Highlanders and BTD combined to form Highland Dragoons. And a very, very new team called TSLL that specifically requested me to cast this match. So consider this their coming out party. Anyway, we got both teams in the lobby and we are just about to get going. Um, I've been absent for the first two weeks of Blood League, so this is going to be my first real uh, hands-on experience with the rather interesting map rules of seven mechs, only one of an assault, one of a heavy as you go down the rounds, and then a free-for-all on the last bit with only a tonnage restriction. So, uh, as we get shifted over here into MWO... You guys are going to have to let me know how everything sounds and looks on your end. But uh, Cameron's Highlanders is almost locked, and I'm going to default to calling them that just because I know Skippy and Epic pretty well. And uh, TSLL. Interesting that a new team got placed in Div C, but uh, it, it's... I guess we'll have to trust Ghost on this. Uh, I didn't play with any of these guys. I don't recognize many of those names. Um... But they're new to the scene, and it's always good to have new people in comp because you get tired of seeing the same old, you know, oh, it's JGX, and they had to form a second team called Black Open just in order to get a fair match. But anyway, we are set, we are locked, and we are headed to Frozen City Night Classic. So, small map. Uh, 395 to 385 in terms of tonnage so no big difference but uh i'm expecting to see a bit more of a brawly match um cameron's highlanders has typically played guidelines and uh tsll did let me know earlier on that they are more of a brawl centric team so could be some uh sexy spicy mpl action happening over the dropship but here we go So, standing starts, we do get a good look at the mechs. We have Blood Asp, Vapor Eagle, Night Gear, Summoner, uh, Phoenix Hawk for early scouting information, and on the far end, a Wolfhound and a Commando. So, stacked up on the best of each class. Interesting, they took a faster assault. Could be something there. Uh, let's go take a look at what we have on... The TSLL side, Slepnir, Black Widow, Cataphract Imola with three LBX-10s. So they have decided they like one weapon system and are going to make the most of it. Uh, Bushwhacker has got the missile pods on the ears, a little bit of a strange choice. But uh, Vulcan Commando 1D, so fairly standard all the way here. Seeing the lower dropship being favored by Cameron's Highlander. Uh, no, this is TSL. I should probably get the uh, team's information up here. So, this is all five cat points. Uh, a little bit of early damage going down with the commando. And possession of Theta goes to TSLL, going for a much wider approach. While Cameron's Highlanders looks to get these LBX-10s engaged. A little bit of cresting going on. Firestarter getting some eyes on the left. Commando getting eyes on the front. And the Bushwhacker getting eyes on the right. So a big rotate here. Uh, TSL are trying to get a little more out of their range. And chasing Commando is never a good idea. But they're getting flanked here. And a lot's going to come down to how much damage they can put on them as they cross this open ground. This is the only bit of no cover that they're going to have. As they move to the city, they're going to be bringing them into those LBX-10s range. So this could be a very big mistake. Uh, pretty big strike lands on Dan, but only him, the Veagle and the Nightjare, not really suffering. Uh, focus fire target seems to be the Bushwhackers as they come in, or they don't look to be shooting the legs nearly as much as shooting torsos. 
Imola being a lot more dangerous that summoner than they're being to that bushwhacker. Not a lot of percentage is going down on the side of Cameron's Highlanders. Meanwhile, the Blood Ass and Veagle are almost halved and really getting each other's way. Turning one way and the other. Summoner falling, falling back. Uh, another strike going down. Might catch that commando or core out the summoner, but the Blood Ass is about to fall here. And there goes the Assault Mech. Meanwhile, the Cyclops Slutbeer is at 90%. This could be an absolute slaughter. They finally got the Bushwhacker down, but I'm not really sure he was the right target. Uh, somebody bring that Black Widow down or somebody a little bit more squishy. The MPL Mechs are falling back as they bring the Vulcan and the commando into them. But there's just nowhere to go as these uh, full W key press in. LBX builds are just going to hunt them down in the wardens of the city. The Summoner Prime is the only thing with any real firepower left as the Veal A is finally about to fall 44% and he just got halved. Um, Phoenix Hawk looks to have already lost one of his gun arms and this is all but over here. A lot of 70% on the uh, Cameron's Highlander side. So really a big lack of focus fire. I think if they had stayed out it in the opening here instead of taking the fight in the city they would have been able to use the range advantage i mean they didn't know they had the range advantage but when you didn't get shot by a ppc or something and kind of take a little bit of best guess best judgment estimates but uh now it just becomes a capping game and with the very wide approach they took earlier this could take just a little bit of time to get over but um the Blood Ass A is an interesting choice. You have any assault mech you could have wanted, and you decided to go for the UAC 5s and UAC 10. Did really match the rest of this comp all that well? Because, I mean, even the simple fact you could have stuck like the summoner with jump jets up here, the Nightjar could have had AC 2s. Uh, I really feel like they missed out on trying to make the best use of this position and trying to hold the cap points over on um, theta and whatever the one i'm staring at is uh big damage number here's here from i mean text drive tech drive truck doing almost 700 but i would argue that cyclops slept near with the quad lbx 10 is maybe the easiest game to easiest mech to play in the game even including the learn boats only uh hot takes on this channel but uh, Hajaz and Vulcan doing some serious work. Those MPLs are still strong even after the patches. And a shining example, Royal Star doing his best, but uh, the definitely the two heavier mechs getting focused out. The Summoner died pretty late to be only doing 100 damage. Might want to have looked at that. Uh, did not follow him through that brawl, but would have really expected more if, unless he was shooting at the commando or something the entire time. Again, really not the target you want to be going on. Anyway, uh, so I have new internet, so this is now coming to you with 60 FPS and hopefully smooth buttery frames. I have a brand new microphone and a brand new OBS setup, so things are a little bit changed, but uh, we're trying to bring a little bit more professionalism to the cast and all across MWO. Or at least the games that are be going to be going on MWO Leagues One. That's the goal. So for anybody who is watching this and interested in casting, and I'll probably say this again at the end of the cast, but uh, if you're interested, let us know, and we can teach you and give you all the setups and cool tools that we've got. But we're really just interested in having more of these games cast. I mean, no one's gonna pick up a random Div C game on a Saturday night, but uh, unless you're here to do it. Anyway, switching over to Stormline Desert, our second match. And we lost the music because I switched over. I mean, it did change that back. Anyway, so I really liked what they did with the uh, big control ball, but mistakes were going into the city here. And I mean, once uh, Team 1 had positions over the dropship, they really should have been able to punish them, again, using the high grounds here and here, even with one long-range mech, and secure a big zone of control that stretches out over um, through with that high ground. So, uh, 
uh, live and learn. They're a new team, so maybe they'll get a little more of the comp meta setups going later. So, headed over to Torbaline, the map of infinite snipers, expecting a lot of ER large lasers here. And definitely got to figure out how to do that and switch back and forth, check on the uh, teams, how well they're being locked. But there are hundreds and hundreds of very good high ground snipers sniper points as ever we will see likely a lot of trades along the alpha to alpha lines echo four to delta five um generally the key cap points coming down to whether or not you want to play the low grounds for a somewhat shorter range thing on kappa but they don't call this the valley of death for nothing and fox seven really takes you a part of all the rest of the map um if you want to play epsilon you're a little more constrained. You can hold quite a lot from Fox 4, Echo 4, but you do need some sort of Vulcan or Commando watching over that. So, we'll see. Um, I'm not sure how you would brawl this map. Again, TSL told me that they were brawlers, and uh, if you can, I haven't seen it. Maybe we need to watch a KDCM on Tourmaline and get a good idea of how they do that. I got one team locked and waiting on the other. They should be there along shortly. Swapping some players around, I see. But let us just go back into it and... <laughs> I am not lonely. I, I, I've solo casted quite a bit. As long as you don't have to run the lobby at the same time, it does much easier. Dulcet tones. That's that's certainly a new one. I'm not. I got a lot of weird compliments when I first started casting because everyone always ends up hating the sound of their own voice. But uh, hopefully everything comes in on the new microphone. I got quite a couple of pop filters set up in front of me, and uh, a lot of the background tried to get dialed in as far as certain filters and making sure you don't hear like my dog going off in the background or the TV in the other room if my sister comes back. But we shall see as we still continue to wait. Team 2 is not set up yet. So, um, I don't actually recognize any of these players. So, I don't know if they're new to the game, if they came back once the, uh, the Caldera basically took over all the patching for MW5, MWO, MW5. But, uh... Certainly something to ask them in the interviews once they get back. Come on, guys. Ready up. At least they're not as bad as some of the Div A teams that'll sit there and metagame and take five minutes to overanalyze the fact that they brought, you know, a Vulcan A instead of a Vulcan 2 and are running the same 3 PPC build. <laughs> Somebody in the comments is going to start complaining that you can't run PPCs on a Vulcan A, but I don't care. You know what I mean. All right. Finally switching out. The, not going to have the Alpha to Alpha trade. Only Michael uh, being placed there initially. There seemed to be stacking Charlie. So the plan being let's go over and take Kappa and then try and push into Echo 6 or something. Um, Playing south side of the map. Unless you get under most of the spires, I think they're going to be cut to ribbons by long-range firepower. Definitely going to have to see about this Charlie stack. Might work if you took a lot of fast mechs, but I think you've got to take two assaults for this, so... Not sure where they're going to get that can't be shot by a Hellbringer or something in the very near future. Say nothing of somebody bringing a Rifleman 2C and just absolutely pasting all those big, fat, open targets. Which cup has the coin? Oh, they're doing this shuffle. They're making fun of them. <laughs> Oh, hello, it's Succubus, White Tiger. We got quite a lot of the Cameron Highlanders gang in here. Guess it's nice when you stack the entire audience with your own personal 
well, not own personal, but definitely feels like a home game for Cameron's Highlanders in here. All right, and we're into it. Uh, I've got a Discord ping. Something bad is about to be happening. Apparently the title was stuck. The title is, should be correct. I changed them before I got there. Somebody check what the title of this thing is. Because I... I definitely changed the title of something before the stream started. All right. Enough of boring technical details. Let there be violence. So, Annihilator 1P, Vulcan, Rifleman 2C. Not a terrible big surprise here. Definitely a little light on the Alpha and Alpha trades. They did lock first. So, we got two coming over here from the camera and Sidelanders. So, Sexy Axie, Max. Death Strike. The Vulcan is going to contest Theta very early and probably run off this commando. Might try and contest it just a little bit. So, and the big, big block is kind of all over the place for TSL. Um, they're finally over to the Alpha Hill that they would have just spawned at if they had started there. Battlemaster 1G, and Annihilator 1P, Rifleman 2C versus Madcap Mark 2 Deathstrike, Executioner, and Summoner. So both sides taking three or four long-range mechs. Definitely the Veagle is a good choice here. Uh, Text Drive's Truck taking a little bit of scrap damage. Epic Poner taking quite a bit more, but giving just as good as they got here. We got the Annihilator 1P already down to 81%, so... Likely a strike or something went down on him. So Kappa is being flipped over TSL, but they've got no real connection over to it. So just trying to keep Cameron's Highlanders on their toes. Veagle taking quite a lot of damage. Lost Speech needs to get into some cover. And some surprisingly accurate PPC fire. I'm impressed. Somebody's been practicing. Well, as I say that, they miss. Of course, the caster curse is going to show up here. But uh, Epsilon being flipped, and that's not really something you really want to let happen if you're going to be on this side of the map, especially in that little corridor over here for the red team. Uh, Epsilon really should be your home cap, but I guess they sent the commando off to Kappa. Uh, commando is still inching around Theta. Not brave enough to try it, and I don't blame him on that front. In the meantime, the trades have been going steadily worse and worse. The Executioner, the Mark II, not really enjoying these long, long engagements. Three PPCs on him, three ERs, and a Goss, two Goss Rifles. Goss Rifles are probably going to be out of range on this trade. But uh, Lost Speech in the Veagle has not had a very good time, and the Annihilator is down to 64%. How well has he managed to spread that? Reasonably well, both side torsos, red armor, and uh, PPC, Veagle, open left torso. But they seem to be having a better opportunity to peek together here and kind of focus their fire. They've definitely made... Oh! Oh! Where did he die at? Oh, that's... That's devastating. Now you gotta send the Wolfhound to cap out, and he can't catch a flea. Uh, this could be a very telling strike here depending on how badly this Annihilator gets chewed up by it. Not very. Uh, both a little bit of paint off the Rifleman Annihilator. And eh, Rifleman took down 5%, but... Somebody tell me where that commando died. This, uh... That was a catastrophic mistake being shot by that Executioner. Oh, he was trying to backstab. Oh, that, that was a poor decision, my friend. And your team needed you. So the XC still getting pasted. Um, but giving as good as he got the nobody's gonna come out of that healthy on that side. So the question becomes can they get a light mech back to make up for the uh commando? Need one good burn on the legs of this flea, and they're not gonna get it. He's gonna get away. Vulcan coming down here to help out. 
So. Cameron's Highlanders is really not taking the time and effort to peek together. They've kind of got a decent concave here, but as they force down TSL into these uh, narrower quarters, they're all staying concentrated, and whatever peaks them is getting three on one. Like, I'm not really sure how much shots a Death Strike has. I'm trying to get on some purchase onto these guys, but uh, I don't suppose it matters with the cap lead being almost 200 points at this stage. Um, you're definitely going to have a fight over here with the Wolfhound and the Vulcan coming up on another commando as they try and take G Gamma. You got to three cap something, and you've got to do it very quickly, and they'll run him off, but prize over there is going to be far more important. And here comes a bigger push. Uh, the flea is coming and screening out the summoner and death strike as they move up. A lot's going to come down to Michael Terry here on this rifleman. How much ammo does he have? And how much damage can he put over the poking guys on the hill? But this is where the higher DPS of him is going to come really into play. Not sure or if he can take out the four mechs coming up on him, but they are all fairly hurt. None above 65. Uh, the Vigil Executioner and the Mad Cat are going to be the real damage dealers, but the Vulcan's coming in to support, and the Annihilator just got side torsoed. Vigil has been just about side torsoed, and now everything is starting to fall apart. The Rage game has not been kind, and the Battlemaster, who has been absent for the majority of this fight, and I didn't realize that, uh, definitely should have been doing something. Oh, this strike could be very painful. Oh, f th that was a 25% strike. Oh, that was brutal. The Battlemaster got uh, hit with three shells. The Vigil got hit with two, and everything is coming apart here. Uh, they did finally get their three cap. The two guys are in the middle of No Man's Land between Gamma and Sigma on the far side as we watch their teammates die. I'm not sure if they can, they're going to get anybody. They have the opportunities. The Executioner has been hurt pretty badly. Uh, open CT, open left torso. The Vigil is uh, bin side torsoed, open CT. Mad Cat is open CT, so just not quite enough to finish the job here. They've got the uh, damage part of it down, but... No kills, and that makes all the difference in a match like this. So once you get that DPS advantage, they have just pushed in and taken ruthless... They, they kicked them while they're down. They kicked them while they're down. Once they lost that first mech, that was the by far the signal, let's caress and go get them. Okay, yeah, title is correct. Thank you very much. I thought it. I thought I'd fixed it, but uh, maybe a different title was wrong somewhere. So let's see if Royal Star and the Wolfhound Two can get a kill just for honor's sake, if nothing else. See if they can tempt the uh, Vulcan or one of the fleas to come into this pit of doom. Trading up with a long-range PPC fire is not the way to do that. They've decided they're going to dive the Vulcan in full view of the enemy team. The Executioner could get some free damage out here. Same as Summoner. Mad Cat rounding the corner. Two Goss Rifles going into the Wolfhound 2. He didn't like that very much, but uh, they did take one of his arms off. He's open CT, guys. Just nail him. He's right there. Still orange. Nope. Not even a single kill. Honor has been defeated. So. They. They played this like an alpha stack. And didn't alpha stack. And I don't know why. I mean. A battle master. An annihilator. A rifleman. And a veal. Is an alpha stack build. But they played a bravo charlie. I'm not understanding that one at all. Um. Battlemaster, who was out of the fight for much of it, did do 451. I didn't keep eyes on where he ended up. But definitely the hero of the hour being Sir Epic Poner, those ERs and the Gauss Rifles. 
definitely paid out for him. So, I'm not sure if those Ghost Rifles have the range to do that 1100 meter shot, but they have been changed and could have a bit more oomph than uh, I'm used to in comp play. Very good props to everybody, uh, except for the Commando. Commando should not have died behind enemy lines at all. <laughs> In any event, uh, more pings in Discord. What else did I do wrong? Oh, somebody's saying, hey. I'm so used to those being, oh, your audio is muted or you didn't show the match. I get PTSD on all of them. But uh, let's switch over to the map strat and talk about this. So, once again, they only had one mech in alpha, but ended up doing a fairly standard strat, four mechs three mechs here to trade off of the guys in the south. They kept the commando kind of dancing around, going Kappa, going Epsilon, and then trying to get backed up into Gamma. He ended up dying in Delta-6, which, interesting choices, but uh, having no real pressure on this Theta cap more or less the entire time, they were able to punish anybody coming out up here to contest the cap. That's probably how the Executioner and the Beagle had so much damage on them. But without being able to reset that, I really would have liked to have seen a better hit squad coming out of either Bravo or Alpha to get over to that and try and contest it. Because once the battle lines are set, there's way too many ways to reset it. So... Uh, maybe some poor planning, some a little bit of inexperience in the comp meta of how difficult that change is to make, flipping it from one side to the other. But I, I appreciate the effort, and once they realized the plan was going south, kind of adapting on the fly, sending up mechs over here to back cap, but the front line crumbled while they were away, so not really all that much they could have done. So props to BTD and... Highlanders Dragoons, as they have combined with Cameron's Highlanders. Um, nothing revolutionary, but well executed, and there's something to be said for that in and of itself. So, heading back over, they've got the team swapped around, and we'll be a fair bit before this gets going again. Um, oh. Time to take the doggo out. My alarm just went off. Only one player recognizes Dan from Drops with Minister. So definitely it seems like we're bringing back people with the uh, newer balance changes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've enjoyed it being quite a bit more lethal. So hopefully as the mobility changes, especially the new Polar Highlands, uh, come out, they can kind of readdress that a little bit. Right now, the mechs are too slow and a little bit punishing getting out of position. I mean, you take one step out and then suddenly somebody with all the new LPLs and other fun toys is on your butt. And you, you can't win a three-on-one in the same way you used to. Um, maybe some heat gap changes could be a good way to solve that, but we shall see. In any event, our next map is going to be taking us over to Solaris City. So, we had a decent brawl map, a very bad brawl map, and now we are going to the mother of all brawl maps. So, if you wanted to play AC-10s and LBXs, this is going to be the drop to do it on. So, let's see if we can get TSLL onto some bit more comfortable ground. And generally, it's hard to run a gun line. It just is. So hopefully them getting on to something they could just straight push through with will uh, even the scores out a little bit. Definitely would like to see something at them. We've almost got TSL locked. Shouldn't see anything too strange out of this. Should be a Bravo Charlie from both teams. Just try and get a little closer to Theta. 
would be interesting to see if somebody makes the decision to bring some assaults with jump jets. Um, you can't get up to the catwalks, but even a little bit of mobility makes a lot of difference on this map. So just whatever you do, don't be the team inside data. That rarely works out well. Stay on the outside, send your lights in there if you've got to. Definitely would like to see some aggression out of something like a Wolfhound Vulcan Commando or maybe even if you've got if you got a confident enough pilot, send a flea early and uh secure the cat before you even have to fight over it. But looking at the teams we got he needs more rack fives in my stream. Get everybody all concerned. I've solo casted before, guys. This this ain't weird. And I enjoy it because there's a lot more room to go in depth on everything. It's just a little bit of a struggle whenever the teams take a little bit longer to ready up. So still waiting on TSLL. Let's go back to the game itself here. I will definitely stream for food. Anyway, hey Dadachi, Kamikaze Viking, White Tiger. So we're getting a little more diversity in here. It's no longer the Cameron's only all the way stream. But uh, definitely a pleasure to see some of the more faces in here. Uh, Dadachi, where does the money that gets tipped or subscribed for mwo leagues go because i've got two subscriptions i don't know what to do with i kind of just give them out to people does it help live buy truckloads of antidepressants for dealing with all of us or anything else more streaming cash rash i don't know the channel has got to be operated by somebody they just let me run the thing <laughs> Anyway, uh, waiting on two more lung butter in Hajaji. So stuff your fear, cut in here, and Hawkblade. I don't think I've bet him. So I wonder how big the roster is for Cameron's Islanders. Somebody in chat, tell me. All right, so DSL up. Just bring back. You know, a bunch of SRMs and LBXs and W key them. Don't stop. Just the first guy in it's going to die. And you keep going. And that's how you focus fire. By shooting the mech that's closest to all the big ball of death coming in. And I believe in you. Let's do this. Highlander Dragoons. All right. I've between this and Terra Therma, I've never really decided which map is prettier. There's quite a lot more going on in this one. And up until you get a camera stuck in one of the buildings, it's very fun. But uh there's lots of little Easter eggs in here that we've used for different sort of scenario missions that we used to run over at Aces Wild. Like there's garages and everything. But getting to it, as we spam over to the dropships, music has started, and we can take a look at the mech list. Firestarter, Summoner, Bloodass, Cyclops, Veagle, Onion. So Cameron's Highlanders has taken much of the wind out of my sails by taking as brawly of a deck as I hoped that TSL would do. Is it all the way brawly? It is all the way brawly. I mean, Ultra 20s, LBXs, yeah, they're, they're short range and are not afraid to show it. Meanwhile, on the other side, Night Gear, Cataphract, Annihilator, and we're just going through the buildings. 
Sorry for whoever got motion sickness doing that. Um, Ultra 10s, Ultra 20s, LBX 10s, AC 5s. So th this could get messy real fast here. I don't know what the hell is happening with my frames. Oh, chalk it up to Solaris City things. There we go. A little bit smoother now. Uh, as for the fight on Theta, there's not been a fight. They have ultimately conceded that to TSL, and they're going to go for a full cap here. I don't really blame them while this has been totally uncontested. Uh, the rest of their team, though, is not really in a position to support them. Uh, stuff you fear with a decent UAV that's going to light these guys up as they get out of here. Rest of the team trickling in. The Wolfhound is in a bad spot. He does found the enemy team, but now you want to get out of there and take little damage, if any. Commando getting scraped, but uh, ultimately successful. Meanwhile... I they've gone on a Zimbabwe flank. I don't know why they're headed to Kappa with the entirety of their team, but that's what they're doing. Uh, they'll definitely get Kappa, considering it's entirely uncontested. But the Commando and the Wolfhound are very, very lonely over here. Uh, definitely trying to play some of the more openness of this map, and I guess use some jump jets. I don't know if the Cataphract gets jump jets, but I'm assume it does. So, Commando getting spot, a little bit of scrapes. So, nothing has been committed to yet. Uh, might have a little bit of a light fight over here on the other side. As the Grinner and the Summoner. Oh, that's not a light. That is not a light. Get out of there, my friend. You guys need to just bail, man. Oh, he's trapped. Oh, he's he's being surrounded very very slowly. I don't. He's he can get out of here still if he goes south, but he's not running away. It, it's a four on. It, it's a. No. It's about to be a five on two. This commando is coming back, and the grinder is going to die for absolutely nothing. This is not. Guys, comp play. You play as a team. This is not team play. This is, I decided I was going to get in a fight with the first thing I saw, and that has not ended well. Um, I, I'd be very interested to hear what their voice comms look like right about now with the uh, two lights dead, because this force is completely immobile. Like, all of these mechs are, you know, 60 kph, it have fat. Uh, so... Is about to be some pain. Like the match is lost. You, you you could kill everything on the map and entirely win the team fight, but without those lights, I mean, a fire starter is not exceptionally mobile, but it's a lot more mobile than anything here. So. All right, this is this is just a waiting game. I mean, there, there there's nothing to this anymore. You're now surrounded in Theta, and they don't have to come get you. You have to push out and get them. And from the stationary look of things, I think they know it. Is the SRM version of that? Yes, it is. Not used to seeing that uh, little missile hutch on his left shoulder. So, I guess we wait. As soon as they step onto Kappa, this is good. They're going to realize they're in a losing position. Nihilator are coming out here and taking some free shots. He is being reacted to, but it's still an Annihilator. Take Skippy down to 69%, although I don't remember how much of that was the Wolfhound and how much of that was the Annihilator plus Airstrike. Bloodass versus Annihilator is not going to go nearly as well for either of these guys as they probably think it will. But uh, Dan the Man's going to come out here and be at close range with an Onion. You want to take that fight, Dan, because this is about as good as it's going to get. You need to start whittling some of these guys down. But again, they're just not taking the fights together. They were doing so well with the Team Peaks and Tormaline Desert. And it's 
not happening here. So it looks like we're going to slowly trickle both sides into this fight. Uh, Haji on the high ground can do a lot here with those SRMs. If he doesn't jump down into the middle of the team, that's a very poor place to be for the summoner. Uh, as they, everybody falls back, the Nightjar will fall, and the Summoner does get to live, but has taken 40% of damage he really didn't need to. Commando and Firestarter coming in for the backstabs. Uh, they seem to have known... Oh, Firestarter goes down. That does give them an option, but uh, as, as more and more mechs falls, I don't think they're going to be able to pull this back out. And the Annihilator doing some serious work, but will finally run out of that immense amount of armor, and the mini Atlas Vapor Eagle is all that's left, so... I think a better look this time for TSL. Um, there was... If they had had both their lightbacks in that fight, it would have been closer. Uh, close enough, they might have won it, truthfully. But that was just another very poor mistake for these lights. I mean, Perkins, once again, taking a wolfhound out there with him. And congratulations, you did... 25 and 157 damage but you cost your team the match right then and there uh they're too slow to react uh the annihilator got left alone and that shows you why that's a bad idea 618 very nice for lost speech sir epic poner trading pretty well in the blood ass versus the annihilator uh tex deck drive truck 258 Aji and that summoner, man, he, that was a very balls deep move that I didn't think would pay out for him nearly as well as it did. Uh, that fight was far from decided when he jumped down in the middle of everybody, but did manage to get out of there as they had enough other problems with the fire starter and commando coming in from the backside. So, uh, spicy. I'll call this drop spicy. So. I wonder if I could sell one of these guys on, like, a uh, at spider that way they get in a lot less trouble with that commando or i don't know it's something light and fast that isn't a combat mech i know a commando is not a combat mech but he's trying to use it like one and he needs to be broken of that habit but anyway it's strange I really would have expected at least one of those lights to have um, jump jets. They took a, a TSLL, took a wolfhound and a commando, not really, I think, appreciating the verticality on these maps. Um, if you can get it, something like... Well, excuse me. Very sorry about that. Um, a fire starter is an excellent choice. Uh, some of the medium laser javelins, especially if you're not trying to get them into light on light fights. Um, otherwise, taking you know a flea with the advanced mask now for the extra top line speed. But they got Theta uncontested. They they ran up here and got it, and then had their entire team sitting in Echo Six trying to, or had their entire team sitting in. Charlie 3 headed towards Gappa for reasons. This is the prize. You won the prize. Just stay in Delta 4 and have these three caps. And then make them come to you. And then push them. Well, I guess we'll see. It's all part of the learning experience of Gappa. I'm being a little bit too harsh on these guys. Uh, I'm glad to have them here. And hopefully they take the constructive criticism with all of the verbose and overblown the casting matches that it's worth but eh, we'll see as we get one with this though um i think maybe taking some extra time to scrim or watch some older matches these maps haven't changed in a long long time and although the format of blood league's a little bit different than other ones you can still use a lot of the concepts if not the weapon builds from older comp matches there's quite a lot on youtube i've put multiple streams up there myself uh there's a lot of stuff still in the old twitch vods especially from the current tournament if you want to use those and going out and getting your ass kicked by a team that's one or two levels above you trying to give you know 
KDCM or any of the Div B guys a scrim is probably worth it just so you can learn how to position and do things. And they're always looking for more and more scrim partners. So. We shall see as it goes on. Um, we've got TSL isn't locked yet. So. So as we go forward, uh, fourth map of the day is the good old, the reliable, the brand new and reworked Canyon. So I don't, I didn't realize it until just now, but this has the old Canyon network on, uh, do any of the other map strat services have the new Canyon or do I just get to like wall of death in this middle ground and all right we're gonna play on the edges um panic panic okay why is there all right well you guys all know what the new canyon looks like i'm just gonna have to hope and pray because middle middle is bad that that's about all you need to know a lot of the firing lanes and the nascar of the I'm drawing it on the old map, but a lot of the firing lanes are longer, a lot of the NASCAR lanes are harder, and we're going back out of TSL's comfort zone here, and we can see what Cameron's does. They've been very, very brawly so far as well, so this has been, with the exception of Tourmaline, all short range all the time. Nobody really wants to bring anything firing over 500 meters. Could be... This is the first time we've had a 5 cap on this map as, as the new map. So we can kind of see how that goes. We've got TSL locked and we're waiting on Cameron's Highlanders here. Um, I've not seen any of the new meta for this as far as like a comp or scrim i'm sure there's been lots of scrims going on i'm just not privy to them all and i've been away for two weeks so this could get very very interesting i think i mean holding spines has always been a very positive thing and with the level of competence cameron's highlanders has shown with the pop tarting ppcs and not nearly taking as much return fire as they should be um, if they can all expose together and try and hold a section of the map, I mean, it still works out that you can hold a middle triangle, especially if your lights win the fight at Theta. So, we shall see. Switching back over into MWO, we are ready to go. So, standing starts, we do get a first look at the mechs. Grasshopper. Mark 2B, a Vulcan, Imola, and Annihilator. So longer range and a. We'll have to find out what's on that cataphract here in a second. Uh, I like the matching paint jobs, guys. Oh, and then I say that, and Michael Terry and Royal Star are different. But uh, Blood Ass Mark 2B, lots of clan mechs. They're definitely favoring this Night Gear, and I can see why. They've done pretty well with it in all these matches. It just keeps getting a little too caught out, so. All right, new canyon, whole new world, same old ridge lines. So, early aggression out of the Vulcan, trying to get over into Epsilon is going to run into stuff here for you in the commando. Vulcan at Haji, and he is taking middle unopposed, which is going to be very nice as they get set up. So let's see how many of these guys are longer range. That's five ERs on the Grasshopper, Goss Rifle, and ER Meds on the Cataphract. PBCs on the Vapor Eagle, so definitely setting out more of a control and uh, staking their claim to that. Although the Mark II B and the Annihilator are both... Not long range. Should probably check that before I say it. Nope, he is long range. I thought he had ballistics. Um, so Commando is trying desperately to get this cap off and is going to manage. Uh, Perkins 
cleverly hiding his little mech and not really great firing angles from either the Mark II or the Annihilator. Bloodass is getting a bit aggressive here and could start taking shots from across the middle. Um, they're not really moving as aggressively as I would think to try and secure some better or closer firing lines. They could get rolled up pretty well here if they just keep advancing on the uh, Annihilator and the Mark II. They can't really get out of this position. And the team is not really fast enough to support them. So an opportunity for TSLL here. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Uh, they do have to tank quite a lot of fire going in. But if they commit to this and just commit hard, look at how spread out Cameron's Highlanders is. Like, they've got a mech in every single Gwid Square. They're, they're not sharing anything. So, COVID social distancing protocol is being enacted, but uh, Big Angry Death Ball can smash anything. And Vulcans, Eagles, they're not... In these configurations, they're not going to be the fastest. The PPCs and the... He's got ERs, doesn't he? Yep, he's MPLs. He's playing like he's got ERs, poking up, getting information. You know where they're at. So. All right. Uh, Cap is typically... Yeah. Oh, man, words. All right. Cap is taking off. And so far, a 70-point deficit, falling down to 80, taking a couple big strikes. Uh, bit of chip damage either side, but... Decisions need to be made, and they need to be made soon. It's 3-0. You've already kind of lost the match, but there is pride to play for here, and you can run them over. This Mark II cannot get out of this position. He will die here if you run at him. So I just want to see some commitments here. We've got the Commando inching in towards Theta. Uh, Vulcan's keeping a pretty clever eye on that. And not really, he might die here if he's a little too uncareful with how he's approaching this. Uh, looks like he's going to be scared off by the Mark 2B. Nope, he is going to commit to this and fire from four mechs, five mechs coming down on him. Lucky to get out of there with his life. He's going to be chased down by Stuff Your Fear. There's not really any support in this trench. The Mark, uh, the Night Gear. I may be getting too tired of this. The Night Gear has to fall back and try and cover him. Does run off Stuff Your Fear, though, with support from the Rifleman 2C. A lot of shots coming in across the way. Not sure at that range how effective those ERs are going to be, but the AC-2s are not going to be any more effective at answering that fire. Meanwhile, Tex and Amberag have stubbornly held this corner, and the Annihilator has got just enough cover to be happy. Uh, some big strikes could go down on him and try and get him out of this match. Meanwhile, another one goes down and uh, takes a fair chunk out of that blood asp. They're bleeding a little too much HP here. If they're going to end up trying to carve their way out of this canyon. And it doesn't look like it. They're going to send two lights, one's added to Kappa. And he's going to be backed up. So same strat they used on Torment Line. Let's see if the front line can hold here. Uh, big Strike is not going to help that. Nightjar takes down 9% or so. So, but the... Nobody here is very comfortable here on Cameron's Highlander's side. Uh, I don't know how well they know what the percentages are between the Blood Ass BCM and the Nightjars. But not a lot of healthy mechs coming in. Uh, Skippy down here at 80 is probably the best of the traitors. Uh, but the Vulcan and the Commando have all the HP. So, it's not a poor showing. Uh, they're a little bit behind, yes, but they're behind in ways that are manageable as uh, more and more fire keep going down. The lights are about to get jumped on. The commando, I think, is caught the other commando. Or the commando is caught the wolfhound on this side. But the grasshopper has some decent shots and could take out the Vulcan here, and that could be all you wrote. Uh, Michael Hensey, 3v1 is trying to get out across, but is going to be jumped on by the Cataphract if he goes that way. Sliding over on the left side, I don't think he can take get away from either the Vulcan or the Commando, so he's got to turn and fight this. 
Meanwhile, the other commando has managed to grab Sigma, is slowly eating into Cameron's Highlander's points lead, and for as long as Michael Hensey can stall, especially if he can manage to leg at least one of these mechs, it would be absolutely huge. A lot of focus has been diverted over here. They've got the Grasshopper, they've got the Cataphract. Everybody's kind of looking in this direction, knowing how important this kill is. Meanwhile, Commando does cap Sigma. So, any airstrikes or UAVs he can throw on that Annihilator would be most helpful. One of the arms on the uh, Mark II B goes down. Oh, I saw an explosion and hoped, but not to be. Uh, Mad Cat Mark I has traded poorly with that Annihilator. And they're definitely running out of HP over here. Uh, looks like a side torso on the Night Gear. Uh, just about. Blood Asp is open left torso with all the guns. CT is open on the Night Gear. And the Blood Letting has left a lot of red mechs over here. And they're running out of options as they lose all of this armor. Could be a fluky headshot, could be a precision shot taking down a key mech like this Mark, Mad Cat Mark II. The Annihilator going over here. Yeah, he's not really an option either. Um, kind of need a miracle here. Vulcan's coming in to get his own after sitting there poking at them. He's finally getting into MPL range. He's had nothing really to shoot at except for the Vulcan that got trapped. Uh, Commando is down in there with him. So they're all going... They're all in the ship together, whether it sails or sinks. Nihilator getting some very decent angles from that junk air pile. So definitely an eye, a place to keep your eye on for future control points. Uh, Dan the Mech is... Really stranded over here. I don't know how many weapons he's got. He's still got two PPCs. He's lost both of his Goss rifles. They're still not managing to kill. 24%, 43%, 40%. Finally one goes down. And I think that's going to be the uh, dinner bell for the sharks as they start circling. Blood Ass is definitely no man's land here. He is going to try and take down the Cataphract or either the Mark IIb. Not going to happen. Gets dropped by the cataphract he was chasing. Grasshopper finally getting involved after shooting across the map for most of this. Uh, Veagle, probably not going to be able to get a kill considering the health of those two, but PPCs in the back could maybe make a miracle happen here. Come on, Danny. Dan the mech man. Wrong target. Get the annihilator who's coming on your right side. Oh. I truthfully hadn't paid much attention to the cap game. I thought it was over a lot sooner than that. Uh, they were really close. They had held on for another 45 seconds, it might have happened. I'm truthfully very surprised. Uh, that front line held for a long time. That was, at the very least, a damage spread very well. Uh, Skippy doing some solid work in the Grasshopper. Uh, I didn't realize he was in range with anything. But definitely the key was Sir Epic Poner and that Annihilator. Just consistently taking advantage and taking away angles. And more importantly, not dying. He didn't get struck. He didn't, you know, shed any of his armor. So. Him being alive helped quite a bit in terms of taking options away from TSLL. Um, he anchored that flank beautifully and wasn't really punished for it with those ERs. Um, it's a very hot build. It's, it's not super comfortable on this map, especially if you've got a really big T-Comp in there. But, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen a bit more aggression. I would have liked to have seen a lot more of a well, check it the fuck it bucket. Let's hold the W keys, you know. Even if you just wait like a minute or two and then do that, it could be really, really effective. So, um, and I would definitely recommend TSL work on their light game. The commando almost pulled it off there. They got within 
25 points. So, a cap game is definitely an option, but Commando maybe not the best mech for it. Depending on the circumstances. So, if I remember right, the last one of these is tonnage locked. So, going over to my handy dandy rule book, because I knew I would never remember this. The last drop is on Rimplexus. It has a maximum weight limit of 420 tons. So, let's see who's going to be blazing away with all of those fun, fun MPLs. Uh, another chance for range. It's kind of a, been a rangy week. New Canyon's rangy. Tourmaline's very rangy. And if you play 5 cap Grim, one of the unfortunate circumstances is you just stick everybody here in Fox 10. And now you've got control of Sigma and Gamma. And that's been kind of the meta for all the three cap Grim Plexus games. And they've tried to mix it up and do different things and hold the middle lines and only play, you know, Kappa or Slon in some of the more aggressive. I think I, I really like that from Kraz was doing the one cap. It's, it made it very clear who was winning and it made it. It was a different set of tactical options. But. For the three cap strategy. I mean, there is the ever present Hamburger Hill and trying to control Kappa Theta. But a lot of this is going to come down to the light game. I think you want to go something really, really aggressive like Assassin, Vulcan, Wolfhound. Dick Cheetah, or maybe a different combat light. Miss Links could be an option. Um, commandos, as we've seen from almost everybody. Maybe do streaks on those. But a really, really aggressive light squad to try and help control these outer three points. And then station a big group of heavies with some serious range. You know, gas station. Or where you can control one of the inner points. I think two is asking for a little bit much. Just sticking them into a dominant position where they can see everything that's coming at them would probably be better to serve than trying to get a little bit too aggressive because you can't see, you know, Theta from Sigma. You can't see Gamma because of India 8. Trying to play back here in Hotel 10 leaves you very open to the backside of Theta. I don't know. Could, there could be some merit in taking a linebacker to bolster that group. And you just have to really hope your assaults don't die for nothing. But you have five mechs going over 100 kph at that point, And you come across a very, very hapless flea or something. It's going to have a bad day. We have predictions. I'm sorry, I'm just catching up on chat because chat is reacting to me of five minutes ago. Uh, for those wondering, we are still waiting on the first team to lock, so we haven't even started that problem. I gotta see what these. I gotta. I want to bet on the match. Who will win this drop? Oh, um. Prediction started nine minutes. Let me teach me how to use that. I'll definitely use that in the cast. It'd be very fun to bring that up and uh, get a little more engagement out of the audience. Although I have five minutes of precognition over you guys, so ha. Ah. Kieran, the five year large any if you put a massive T comp in it is not cold as hell and especially not on a hotter map. Chat would like in game sounds on. Okay. Chat will get its in game sounds.
Pretty sure I didn't have anything muted. I just keep the camera so far back. Uh, so I guess we're not hearing the glorious auto cannon fires. Yeah, this is the last one. All right, what are they on about in this? No one has mentioned chocolate chip cookie dough. They are all wrong. How, how could you not mention chocolate chip cookie dough? At least we don't have anybody out here like advocating for vanilla ice cream or just chocolate. So, got some at least connoisseurs. Genus Butter Pecan. Don't know if that's like a brand or something that I don't know about, but. All right, should be both locked. Final drop. It is four to zero for. Islander Dragoons over TSLL. One of the newest faces to cop, but uh, they should have learned something today. And if they learn something new every day, they get a little bit closer to start winning some of these games and start winning some of these leagues. So, oh, cool. They did the whole prediction sort of thing. All right. Well, I'm just getting into the drop. So, here we are. Totally going to use some insider knowledge. It'll be great fun. <laughs> All right, as we wait for the dropships to get in here and get the music playing. There we are. So, Annihilator, Warhammer, Flea, Phoenix Hawk, Battlemaster, Wolfhound, Hellbringer. So, TSLL does have the same right idea. A lot of range and three fast mechs to go around the outside with. Uh, BTD, Cameron's Highlanders, that whole mess. Black Lantern, Commando, Vehicle, Annihilator, Nightgear, Flea. So, three fast mechs on their side, although three significantly less capable mechs than Phoenix Hawks and Wolfhounds. Um, I've never been a terribly big fan of the Black Lantern. So. A lot more tonnage invested in the assaults. So. Could see the heavy or light lance win the outside for TSLL and lose the middle. But it's only 15 tons if I'm doing my math right, which I'm almost certainly not because I'm doing this on the fly. But ER larges, ER larges, ER larges, ER larges. And if you were fast, definitely not fast. ER larges. Okay. No surprises, just wanted to make sure. So, I'm going to go up here and take Hamburger Hill for TSLL. Have good shots on Theta. Commando has got to run for its life very shortly. Spreading out of the gas station, we have the Annihilator Mark II B, Eagle, and where is he shooting? They're shooting at the Commando. And the Nightjar. Interesting you go for a Nightjar here and not a Novacat. Mouse rifle? Yeah. That's why. <laughs> so. For the outside caps, early lead definitely goes to uh, Cameron's Highlanders. Three caps to one. And is going to be a concerted effort to take Kappa here. Don't know if this will get spotted by the Veagle. Could get some shots in. But as soon as they know he's there, they've got decent cover in Kappa. Commando is living up to his name and staying underneath these guys. He's got decent cover and decent support from his back line, but is absolutely holding that Theta point. Does look like he's headed over to investigate or contest Kappa and does get spotted doing it. 
another long range trading match and this has not gone well for TSL across the game so let's see if they can do it a little bit better uh not really any hard commitments from either side only decent damage going on to lung here but they already have kappa and are coalescing around it again could be a sneaky push in here or they're looking for that commando so full cap on kappa and a lot will depend on where these lights decide to head to um, not taking the more aggressive line and pushing down to where the commando would be on their way to Gamma. Uh, looks like they're going to try and sneak out Feta. This will be a bold decision. And a lot will come down to the guns up here. Um, I think they would have the advantage with a massive ERs up here. And it's a lot going to come down to how well they trade and whether or not they can keep the... Light safe. They're not moving in just yet, but uh, Flea is going to take the safest possible approach. But it's he's not headed to Theta. Head to Epsilon. Okay, I'm not sure. All right, we're headed to Epsilon. And Commando is still being cagey for Cameron's Highlanders, but the Flea is about to spot this, and we could get a very interesting light battle here. Uh, Royal Star does have backup. The question is whether or not he can keep Amarak engaged long enough for the backup to get here. So a little bit of a jousting match going on, but the Flea has decided no. All right, so other shots are coming in, and Amarak's running, but Amarak can't get away if Royal Star decides to chase. Uh, that is, so he will get away with the Wolfhound, who might shape, looks like he opened up one of the legs. In the meantime, uh, the continual fight over Hamburg Hill, the gas station, has been going on far, Lung has paid for it, Skippy has paid for it, both those guys are open, but, um, Annihilator has rolled it reasonably well. Looks like the Warhammer's open in a torso. And the Hellbringer's lost both of his arms, so they'll be able to track him quite a bit better. Oh, they're just smoking. Um, oh, that was a huge kill! That was a huge kill! So they should be able to force this back and then take Theta. I mean... Just bring over one of the lights and force them to poke. This could be really big. Skippy's lost both of his arms. Or, okay. I'm getting way too tired for this, clearly. <laughs> Alright, so Epsilon's going to be counter-capped by the Black Laner as the lights are all over on Theta and trying to force this engagement. So, if they take Theta, because right now, uh, Cameron's Highlanders has to poke this. Like, they can't really afford not to, but they can't afford to do so because they've been consistently losing the trades, so... TSL has a very good opportunity here. They sliver cap Theta. They're going to bail out of that. They're going to go to Kappa. They might catch this Commando if they're feeling a little bit frisky. Uh, Strike goes down and hits absolutely nothing as the Phoenix Hawks already rolled away. And Commando has decided he wants to take a fight of this. But the Flea is here. The Annihilator is going to be able to get shot. Stuff your fear. Living up to your name, fear is a good thing sometimes, and he really wants this Annihilator, but he's running into an airstrike. One hit could be all that spells the end for this commando. He dodges all of those artillery shells. Amazing. Uh, Annihilator has been halved, but is still standing. Stuff your fear, again, fighting 4v1, 5v1, as this Hellbringer is going to have shots here in a moment. Uh, cap lead is still in the favor of Cameron's Highlanders, and they're stalling out long enough with everyone shooting at the commando that I think the opportunity has been lost here for this to be anything. They they need four caps at this point with a 250 point deficit and only 100 points to go. So, uh, Somebody please drop this commando so that they stop shooting at them and can go back to shooting at the Mad Cat. So I think the Hellbringer is about to get toasted here. The Annihilator is not the right fight for him, and he's getting 
shot from about four directions. Black Lantern is still reasonably is still all the way healthy and can contest some of these caps if needed. But uh two caps, they only need to hold on to one at this point. Sigma is gonna be contested here in a moment. Gamma is not going to be contested at all. They're going to take Theta as the assaults and everybody move in. Uh, Annihilator with only a CT is going to be unimpressive, but probably able to hold Theta if just by scratch damage. Um, the Annihilator is probably going to go down here with the Warhammer and the Battle Master. Come on, drop him. Kill it! Kill it! There we go. So, just about even on kills, um, but cap pressure has been lost. That commando definitely saved the day there. He was distracting so many people for so long. Got a decent air strike on, uh, artillery strike on the Annihilator, and because they didn't drop him, he was able to fall back and go back and reset caps, because, I mean, stuff your fear. That, he, he may not have had the most damage, but look at the time of the capture made that match uh the flea was able to do scare off the other flea uh only 70 damage 111 and what should have been a better fight but uh decided not to take that fight wolf found two getting 56 kind of out of range of those mpls for quite a lot of this so still a solid effort um really like that match does show a lot of promise and they won the trades. Like, Lung Butter got blitzed. He, they shot his CT. He's got a really big one. He didn't roll the damage correctly. And they took advantage of that fight and just not quite able to fully capitalize on it. Not getting quite aggressive enough. So, in any event, I have both of them headed over here for interviews. And I'll bring them in here in a second. Hopefully they remember. All right, come on, Cameron. All right, we got a uh, Royal Star here, and somebody's pinging me again. Welcome. Yep, you just about got uh, Cam Cadian Network on. Caps, and you just about got Grimplexus on kills. Like, oh, that commando hadn't stalled you guys out. Yep. Welcome. So, congratulations to Camerons, and well fought from TSLL. So, uh, going through these maps really quickly, um, I, I think a consistent uh, weakness for TSLL was that light play. A uh, number of times the commando kind of got caught out on Tormeline and on Solaris. Yeah, uh, for Cameron's Highlanders, or okay, you're gonna have to tell me who you're. It's Highlander Dragoons, right? Okay, um, that Canyon Network game. Why you guys had somebody in like 
every single person had their own grid square, it seemed like. Uh, that was intentional. Okay, well, uh, the early cap on... Go ahead. Yeah. So speaking of Grim, um, how was it called for Stuff Your Fear to go in after that Annihilator? Yeah, you delayed that push and broke it up long enough that it completely flipped that fight, so... I was very, very impressed watching all of that go down. Uh, Yeah, for TSL, I would really encourage you to go back and look at the VODs, and you can really see that. You already know how close the matches are, but just a little bit better light play, a little bit better focus fire, totally would have flipped this around. Yeah, so uh, this is your first cop experience, correct? And you got placed in Div C, and based on the results I just saw, you certainly earned it and still belong here, so. Well, gentlemen, it is almost midnight here. I would congratulate you both on a very fine set of matches. Uh, do you have any final thoughts for each other or the audience? All right. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I would encourage anybody who's interested in getting involved in casting, reach out to me. We'll definitely train you. I didn't know how to do this a year ago, and um, it's a lot of fun. Could use some more co-casters. So. All right. Well, that, everybody.